Japan. Good morning, everyone. The resumption of the meeting of the Committee on Labor, Employment, Social War Welfare, and Migrant Workers of the Commission on Appointments in the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. We are resuming the hearing, which was suspended last September 14. May we first uh, hear from uh, the majority floor leader's report on the parliamentary status of our meeting this morning. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. Your Honours, last September 14, 2022, this committee deliberated on the ad interim appointment of Secretary Benvenido Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. But uh, due to lack of material time, upon motion by uh, Majority Leader L. Ray Villafuerte, Congressman L. Ray Villafuerte, which was properly seconded, the chair of the committee suspended the deliberation on the ad interim appointment of Secretary Laguesma. That is all for the parliamentary status, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. Today, the committee will resume the deliberation on the ad interim appointment of uh, Secretary Bienvenido Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. May we call on the appointee under consideration to take the designated seat in front, sir. And we would like to remind uh, your honor that uh, you are still uh, under the same oath. So before the chair opens the floor for your inquiries, let it be put on record that this committee is in receipt also of the manifestation of support from Representative Jose Gay Padiernos for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Bienvenido Laguesma, Secretary, Department of Labor and Employment. Representative Padiernos is presently on travel uh, abroad and let his manifestation from the gentleman of Nueva Ecija form part of the proceedings of this committee. So now we will uh, continue where we left off last uh, September 14, and uh, the chair recognizes Senator Riz Antiveros, who has previously manifested to continue with their inquiries on uh, the good secretary, Senator Antiveros. Ma'am. Salamat gid, Mr. Chair, at uh, mayang aga. Maganda umaga pong muli, Secretary. Uh, just to continue po and to conclude with my questions. Um, so, sunod po on workers' social protection. Social protection is integral in the pursuit of decent work for all. Income support for workers in times of employment loss is one of the key government programs. As defined by the DOLE itself, Income support refers to cash and non-cash assistance that seeks to protect and supplement people's incomes, especially when they are most vulnerable. So ang tanong ko po, Secretary, bukod po sa mga kasalukuyang programa tulad ng Special Employment for Students, OSPES, Job Start Philippines, at sa Katupad, anong mga bagong programa ang plano po ng Departamento na i-administer sa layunin na makapagbigay ng income support para sa mga, mga, gaga, mga manggagawa na humaharap sa uh, kawala o kaya nagiging ditiyak yung empleyo nila? Secretary Laguas, may recognize. Una po, pagbati muna ng isang magandang umaga. Sa lahat po ng uh, kumakatawan at bahagi po ng ating Committee on Labor, Employment, Social Welfare, and Migrant Workers. Doon po kaugnay po sa katanungan ni uh, Senador Honteveros, wala po kami presently po, wala po akong tinitignan na bagong programa. Subalit ang layunin po namin ay palakasin, pabilisin, at iyakin po na yung mga beneficiaryo ng mga programa na existing the Department of Labor and Employment, kagaya po ng TUPAD, kagaya rin po ng Government Internship Program, na nais po namin sanang palawakin yung kanya pong REITs at uh, yung pong panahon na inuukol upang talaga pong ma-develop yung sumasayalim sa gantong programa. At uh, yung pong uh, tinatawag natin na livelihood integ uh, Integrated Livelihood Program po ng Department. Tama po yung inyong nabanggit, bukod po sa wage benefits, motoon din po kami sa non-wage benefit at uh, if ever po na meron kaming uh, binaplanong bagong programa, nais po namin itong isang guni doon po sa aming social partners, labor and employer sectors po. Maraming pong salamat. Maraming salamat din po, Secretary. And siguro moving forward sa mga susunod na taon, baka may darating pong panahon na mapapanahong mapag-usapan din ang mga bagay tulad ng unemployment insurance. So salamat po. 
Tungkol naman po sa mga gig economy workers. Uh, para po sa ating mga gig economy workers uh, na may diin po sa ating delivery riders, uh, nag-file po ako ng resolution nung nakaraang 18th Congress na nanawagan po para sa isang seryosong inquiry sa iba't ibang mga panukala na naghahanap o naglalayo na makapag-provide ng employment benefits at iba't ibang forma pa po ng social protection din para naman po sa mga manggagawa natin sa gig economy. Uh, gig economy workers were our unsung heroes during the height of the COVID lockdowns, our lifeline to food, groceries, and other essentials. Given their contribution to our collective well-being, as well as the risks and hardships they endured on our behalf, I believe oh, it's high time to enact legislation establishing a social safety net for gig economy workers. So sa pagsapung ito, meron po ba kayong plano magsagawa ng konsultasyon sa mga delivery riders at makakaasa po ba kami sa inyong suporta para makabuo ng isang batas na magtatakda sa mga tamang benepisyo at karapatan nitong mga gig economy workers. Mr. Chairman? Yes, please proceed, Mr. Secretary. Salamat po. Ito po nga, Gig Economy ay isang developing at um, evolving po na sista konsepto. At uh, hindi lamang po ito napakinabangan sa panahon ng pandemya sa atin pong sariling bansa, kundi sa iba-iba pang mga bansa na apektado rin po ng pandemya. Yun po nga, uh, inyong nabanggit tungkol po sa delivery workers. Ang atin pong uh, Gig Economy ay mayroon po siyang wider universe of workers. Kami po ay isang ayon na uh, usapan at pakipagkonsultahan. Subalit, kung inyo pong mamarapatin, hindi po bang isama na rin po yung iba pa, kagaya po ng ating uh, freelancers, uh, on-account workers, online traders, na sa aming panlagay po, dapat din pong magkaroon ng access sa social protection at hindi po rin siguro isama yung konsepto ng workmen's compensation. Yun po yung nakikita namin na dapat pong direksyon sa pagkatunay po ng mahalaga ang naging kanilang papel at uh, kontribusyon dito po sa ating uh, dinaranas na pandemya. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po uh, pati para sa very welcome na uh, pagiging bukas na lampas definitely sa, sa delivery riders isama pa po yung iba't ibang klase o subsector ng mga gig economy workers. At maganda nga pong mapag-usapan din in the future yung workmen's compensation or compensation para sa working people. Very well taken po. Doon naman po, Secretary, sa increasing workers' income o pagtugon natin sa wage inequality in the Philippines. Uh, this might seem obvious po, but it is believed that persons living below the poverty line are not in that situation because they don't work or because they refuse to work. Rather, they're in that situation because of inadequate access to economic opportunities. The labor force participation rate is an estimate of the economy's active workforce. Based on the labor force participation rate as of July 2022, there was an increase of 6% to 65.2% year-on-year from 59.4%. This means that there has been an expansion of employment opportunities and that more firms are looking to hire workers. However, RA 6727 or yung Wage Rationalization Act does not provide even close to what workers need for a decent life despite the guarantee of a living wage under the Philippine Constitution. Dagdag po dyan, yung nagko-constitute po ng minimum wage ay nag-iiba-iba uh, across the 17 regions at sa bawat pong region, minimum wage may also differ on the basis of the sector uh, worker belongs to such as agricultural or non-agricultural. So, considering the foregoing, uh, ano pong ginagawa na ng department para bawasan yung income inequality sa ating workforce? At ano po ang inyong opinion, Secretary, dun sa panukala na iscrap yung regional wage boards at sa halip magtakda ng national minimum wage? Sir Chairman, kindly proceed. Uh, Mr. Marami Mr. pong salamat. Sa pananaw po ng Department of Labor and Employment, sa pangkasalukuyang kalagayan ng ating ekonomiya at mga umiiral po ng mga konsiderasyon, ang amin pong pagtanaw ay uh, better approach pa rin po yung regional wage fixing because of the following reasons po. 
Meron po kasi ditong direct participation ang social partners, labor and employers in terms of decision making. Secondly po, dahil nakikita po namin na mayroong mga factors na area specific po dapat maging tugon. At ang higit pong nakakaalam niyan ay yung pong mga directly affected na worker sector at employer sector. Marahil po ang talagang pinakamaganda sanang kalagayan eh, yung bipartite negotiation eh. Subalit medyo malayo-layo po po tayo ron. So naniniwala po kami na dapat po uh, in the absence of uh, any amendment to the present uh, regional wage fixing uh, uh, mechanism, ito po sana ay magpatuloy dahil magbubukas po ito ng pagkakataon ng countryside development. Dahil alam po naman natin, hindi pare-parehas ang kakayahan infrastruktura sa iba-ibang mga rehiyon Liliit po kung hindi tutuloy ang mawawala yung pagkakataon ng ating mga regions outside the urban centers, outside NCR, na makaikayat ng mga investors, both local and foreign. So, yun po ang aming pananaw. So, balit having said that, tinitignan din po namin sa pamamagitan po ng National Wages and Productivity Commission na iangat po natin ang, ang task ng labor and productivity para po yung hinahanap natin na pagkakataon magkaroon po ng karagdagang pakinabang at binipisyo ang ating mga gagawa ay atin pong makamtan. Marami pong salamat. Marami salamat din po, Sec. Well, dun po sa regional uh, wage fixing, baliktad po yung pananaw ko uh, sa inyo uh, dahil sa tingin ko po, bagamat tama po kayo may mga factors na area specific, baka po mas marami, lalo na ngayon, mas marami pa po yung mga factors na common uh, across the region sa magkakaparehong mga manggagawa o mga manggagawa sa mga magkakaparehong uh, industriya. Na appreciate ko naman po yung pagtingin nyo dun sa kahalagahan ng uh, participation ng mga stakeholders kahit sa kasalukuyang mekanismo ng regional wage fixing. Pero muli, tingin ko, pwede rin namang bigyang daan iyon sa gabay ng dole kahit kung darating na ang panahon na mapag-uusapan natin yung pagtakda ng national uh, minimum wage. Yung countryside development din po, palagay ko, mas mabibigyang daan kapag uh, uh, hindi na tayo nakapako dun sa regional wage fixing. Kasi parang may epekto din po siya tulad ng uh, magkakaibang ira. Halimbawa, uh, yung mga less developed na rehiyon sa ngayon, tulad ng mga uh, lower class municipalities, ay hindi makakahabol lalo sa mas pantay-pantay na national development. At yung mga working people niya, uh, kung habang panahon ay eh, nakapako tayo sa regional wage fixing. But having said that, um, uh, I'm content, Mr. Chair, to leave the question at this point. For now, nabibigyan at least ako ng uh, pag-asa na may kabukasan to talk about alternative mechanisms moving forward, particular dun sa sinabi niyong baka pinakamaganda nga yung bipartite uh, wage fixing. Kasi kung ganon, nabubuksan yung posibilidad moving forward. Alimbawa, pag-usapan bukod sa pagtakda ng national minimum wage, yung wage setting by industry or even by groups of corporations na may mga naririnig akong magandang uh, noises na may kabukasan ang dole doon. But uh, as I said, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Secretary, I'm content to leave this um, question at this point for now. Uh, doon po sa, at ito, second to the last question ko sa inyo, Sec, doon po sa tripartite representation of workers in various government corporations. Uh, the Philippine government adopted tripartism as a state policy, particularly by virtue of Section 3, Article 8, sorry, Article 13, under the Social Justice and Human Rights uh, provision of the Philippine Constitution at sa ILO Convention Number no. 144. Uh, nababanggit din po ng ilang mga manggagawa na kadalasan ay yung mga naupo para kumatawan sa mga manggagawa di umano ay hindi galing sa kanilang sektor. Pero uh, kaya ginigiit po na yung bagong administrasyon sa tulong uh, ng uh, secretary ay kailangang mag-appoint ng mga bagong sets ng kinatawan, tunay na kinatawan mula sa manggagawa. So makapagbibigay po ba kayo, secretary, ng assurance dito sa tripartite representation ng manggagawa, particular po sa SSS, ECC, Pag-ibig Fund at sa Ka-PhilHealth? 
Mr. Chairman. Please proceed. Kasama po doon sa una naming uh, tinignan at uh, sinuri ay yung uh, umiiral na representasyon sa mga tripartite bodies where uh, it is really provided by law na meron pong kinatawan, hindi lamang pong manggagawa kundi mga namumuhunan. Ang uh, naging karanasan po ng mga manggagawa, naging karanasan din ng mga namumuhunan. At uh, as we speak, nagawa, nakagawa na po ako ng rekomendasyon uh, doon sa ilang mga nabanggit ninyong uh, ahensya. At ayun uh, po ay pinadaan ko doon sa mismong sekretary na may kinalaman doon sa uh, ahensya na dapat po ay magkaroon ng uh, representasyon ang both labor and management po. At inaasahan ko po na sa uh, loob ng uh, madaling panahon, magkakaroon po, lalabas po yung kanilang mga uh, uh, respective appointments po upang sila talaga ay makapag-participate sa deliberation po ng mga nabanggit nyo kasama na po yung SSS at saka yung ACC, PhilHealth po at saka yung uh, atin pong pag-ibig. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, Sek. At yung lalong madaling panahon na iyon ay posibleng sa loob nitong taon? Opo. Salamat po. Magandang balita po yon. Sa huling tanong ko po sa inyo, Sek, tungkol sa pagpapalakas ng mga union at saka right to self-organization, um, the number of workers in unions continues to be low and those enjoying CBA benefits even lower. Uh, anecdotally, workers' difficulties stem from non-regular contingent work arrangements and employers' well, hostility against their exercise of the right to self-organization. Based on current PSA data, there was a decrease of establishments with unions from 6.7% in 2016, napakababa na, to 4.2% in 2020. So, nabawasan pa ng one-third, panahon pa ng pandemia. The CBA coverage rate also decreased from 7.2% to 6.3% in the same year. So, gayong, ganito po yung sitwasyon. Uh, pwede po bang marinig mula sa Secretary yung kanilang mga plano at programa kaugnay ng pagpapalakas ng unionismo at yung ng workers' right to self-organization? Mr. Secretary. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Yun pong mga estatistika na ipinalalabas po ng PSA, ginagawa po naming batayan yun upang maging bahagi sa aming pagpaplano, pagagawa po ng programa, at yun po'y ginagamit din namin sa aming konsultasyon to both labor and employer sector. Subalit hindi po kami humihinto doon lamang po sa bilang because naniniwala po kami na beyond the numbers, there are stories. Dapat po tignan ng isa-isa. Maaari niyo po yung pagsasara ay ibang, uh, mayroon pong iba-ibang katahilanan at dapat po ay yun maging batayan ng aming intervention. Hindi po namin ginagawa na generalization dahil nakita lamang po namin na nadagdagan o nabawasan ang bilang ng mga nakikinabang sa pakinabang po ng CBA. Ang uh, sando naman sa inyong katanungan yung mga programa, ang tungkulin po, ang role po ng Department of Labor and Employment may kinalaman sa pagsusulong ng karapatan sa pag-organisa ay dalawa po sa aming pananaw. Una po yung promotional. Ito po ay may kinalaman po dun sa pag, uh, pagpapagbigay o pagtutulong uh, pag, uh, sa kanila na magkaroon ng tinatawag po natin na effective and responsive labor education. Hindi lamang po mga manggagawa. Asama po ang atin pong mga employers at higit po dyan, karagdagan, yun pong mga government agencies na may kinalaman po sa pag-exercise po ng karapatan ng mga magagawa, dapat po kami magkaroon ng common understanding ano po ba ang rights and responsibilities na dapat po namin ginagampanan upang ito pong uh, nakasaad sa ating saligang batas ay magkaroon po talaga ng place and substance. So doon naman po sa regulation, kinakailangan po namin sigurong pabilisin ang pagkilos kung meron pong mga kaso na nakabimbin, may kinalaman po sa right to self-organization. Yan po ang direksyon na gustong tahakin ng Department of Labor and Employment sa loob ng mga darating na panahon. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat din po, Mr. Chair, uh, Secretary. 
Um, at na-appreciate ko rin po yung sinabi nyo dun sa bahaging trabaho ng Department na Regulation, yung oversight din po ninyo sa mga kaso, lalo na yung may kinalaman sa right to self-organization. And just as a last point po, for the record, uh, yung binanggit nyo nga po tungkol sa mga CBA, just thinking aloud po, I wonder if ever makonsider ng dole na Going isang target then uh, within any given year kapag may mga proseso underway na posibleng patungo sa uh, pag-conclude ng successful CBA negotiations na proactively makasuporta ang dole para tumaas yung uh, absolute number or percentage ng mga uh, unions uh, under CBA coverage uh, year on year. Dahil kahit pa paano po, uh, tama, hindi lang po itong mga bilang, pero itong mga bilang at itong mga percentage na to ay kahit pa paano may kinalaman pa rin dun sa mas, um, mas uh, positive na partisipasyon at pakinabang na ating mga manggagawa sa ating ekonomiya, which itself is a factor also for uh, economic development. So with that, Mr. Chair, uh, Good Secretary, kinoconclude ko po yung aking mga pagtatanong sa inyo. Marami salamat po sa inyong mga tanong, yung pag-engage nyo po sa mga issues na ito. And I look forward, Mr. Chair, uh, moving forward na patuloy na maihatid sa isang bukas na kalihim at kagawaran uh, ang mga issues, mga uh, hinaing, mga hiling uh, ng isang uh, ng uh, iba't ibang mga uh, grupo ng manggagawa sa ating labor sector na pantay lang at certain moments higit pa sa ibang mga sektor ay gusto naman talagang isulong ang at makinabang sa pag-uunlad ng ating ekonomiya. Marami pong salamat. Marami uh, damo nga salamat Mr. Chair. Thank you also uh, Senator Tuberos. May we get your views on that Mr. Secretary on the manifestation of uh, the Senator Tuberos? Kasama po nila kami doon sa pangangarap at uh, sana magkaroon ng katuparan na maragdagan pa po. Yung po kasing karapatan na mag-organisa, yan po ay choice ng mga workers. At uh, kung meron pong pagkakataon na kami maka makapagbibigay ng assistance o paggabay, yan po ay laging magiging direksyon ng Department of Labor and Employment. At ang Department of Labor and Employment po, uh, gusto ko lamang pong ulitin, hindi pa man po ako opisyal na nanunumpa kay Pangulong uh, Bongbong Marcos, ay ako po ay nagkaroon na ng konsultasyon sa uh, at least walong grupo po, iba-ibang grupo ng mga manggagawa. Bukas po ang aming tanggapan, kung nung pong panahon na ako hindi pa po nanunungkulan, ay naging open na po ang aming uh, pakipag-usap sa, sa kanila, lalong higit po ngayon, sapagkat ako po ay mayroong mandate na dapat ay asikasuhin, hindi lamang po siguro ang may kinalaman sa mag manggagawa, ganun din po sa mga namumuhunan kasi po ang Department of Labor and Employment serves both labor and employers. Maraming salamat po. Yes, Senator Tuberos. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Secretary. Yung huling, for the record ko na lang po na brief manifestation. Uh, opo, in, in siguro ideal situations, yung pag-oorganisa po natin, ng sino mang working people, choice po ng manggagawa. Pero siguro mas alam po ito ng Labor Secretary higit pa sa ibang mga kalihim sa kabinete bilang tulad nung sinabi ko noon yung uh, uh, hinahangad na champion ng labor sa kabinete. Uh, naintindihan ko po yung sinasabi yung pagbabalanse sa interes ng iba't ibang sektor. Pero I really feel and higit pa sa akin yung mga manggagawa, feel po talaga nila, gusto nila champion uh, nila higit sa lahat ang kanilang labor secretary. So choice po nila, na sabi nyo nga choice nila kung mag-organisa o hindi. Pero talaga po, uh, bago pa man ng pandemya, dahil sa mga kalagayan sa ating ekonomiya, lalo na ngayong pandemya, eh, mayat maya or madalas uh, hindi makapag organisa gusto man ng mga manggagawa either dahil sobra po talagang miserable ang working conditions nila so wala silang sapat na kaparaanan na mag-organisa ng union o di naman kaya ay uh, ang karanasan nila ay hostile ang kanilang management sa kanila o di kaya may mga pagkakataon din na uh, hindi po nila nararanasan o nararamdaman ang suportang inaasahan nila mula sa uh, sa dole. Kaya ang inaasahan ko po, Mr. Chair, Good Secretary, moving forward, ay sa mga susunod na taon na kayo'y manunungkulan bilang kalihim na um, patuloy nyo pong hanapin at hanapin yung mga paraan na 
makalikha ng conducive environment na kung gusto, kung gustong piliin ang manggagawa, mag-organisa, ang patpalagay ko, 9 out of 10 ay gusto, ay magkaroon po ng conducive environment para mai sa gawa po nila ito. So muli po salamat, Secretary. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Antiveros. The manifestation of uh, the good senator form parts of the proceedings of the committee. Senator uh, Representative uh, Sagarbaria. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would like to direct my question to the good secretary. Uh, sir, my question is this. Local government units are not mandated to pay their employees, especially JU's job orders, the minimum wage, which is being established by the Tripartite Agreement Board. No? So what is your take, what is your opinion on this? Because where I come from, they do not pay the minimum wage to their job order employees of the city or the municipality. They're paying them below the minimum wage. Like for the sake of discussion, in my province, the minimum wage is 397 pesos per day. But government employees, of course, they're not considered employees because they're JOs, but still working for government, are being paid 350, 340, 360. Why don't we come up with something that mandates them to pay what is being agreed by the tripartite board to pay them the minimum wage of the certain locality? What is your take or opinion to this? Yeah. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chairman, yung pong minimum wage, yun ho ay basic standard, wala pong exemption nun, unless... Meron pong distress na kumpanya na paglabas po ng uh, wage order ay mayroon siyang exemption. Pero dapat po ipinatutupad yan, uh, respective po kung job order siya, casual siya, at uh, regular siya. Minsan po dapat po ang distinction kung ikaw ay regular na, meron ka na pong naatay na seniority. So umaangat po ng konti ang kanyang sweldo. Mr. Chair, yes. Mr. Secretary, I'm talking about local government units, not private Wala, wala po kaming uh, yeah, because the, jurisdiction sa government. The, uh, yeah, because po. the law says that government, local government units are exempted from paying the minimum wage. So what is your take on this? Do we have to let them pay the minimum wage, wage which is being agreed by the tripartite wage board in a certain uh, region for that matter? Because as... What is being practiced now, because they are not obliged to pay the minimum wage, they're paying, which is being agreed by the tripartite wage board, they're paying below local government units, the cities, municipalities. They do not pay their job orders that. So what is your opinion and take on this? Do we, are you in favor of requiring them to pay the minimum wage, which is being agreed by the tripartite wage board in a certain region for that matter? That's my question, Mr. Chair. Personally po, dahil uh, gusto ko lang muna sigurong i-prepace yung aking uh, sagot na yun pong mga government uh, employees, hindi po saklaw kasi ng Department of Labor and Employment. Eh. Private lang po kami. Pero gusto ko po sabihin na sana magkaroon din po ng tamang pagtrato sa mga government employees. At uh, hindi naman po siguro kadahilanan na uh, dahil uh, hindi namin sila nasasaklawan, hindi po kami pwede ring mag-advocate na sana itignan kung pwede pong improve ang kanilang situations. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Chair, last point. The last uh, question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Representative Sagarbaria. Mr. Secretary, and uh, we know, I know for a fact that you have been in government on the Department of Labor for more than 20 years. You have vast experience in this. And uh, is there a protocol in government, especially DOLI, Department of Labor and Employment, but there is a, a problem, I say, between management and labor for you to be able to address the situation on a win-win situation of which you will neither be pro-labor or pro-government. So this is to entice also, especially if we're thinking of the rest for investments to come to the country to be able to assure uh, the investors that Dolly is there to be able to maintain peace in a certain industry. Thank you very much. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chairman, ang DOL po always strives with a win-win solution. The last thing that uh, gusto po namin mapuntahan ay eh, yung nagdi-desisyon eh. Kasi pa nga po ang uh, direktiba po sa amin, uh, sa aming panunungkulan, ay uh, pagkaisahin po ang mga gagawa at namumuhunan, paglapitin po at pagbatiin yung medyo mayroong konting hidwaan, at kung hindi po namin may sasayos dun sa sinasabi nyo na win-win formula, Doon po papasok po yung paghahatol na dapat po ay makatwiran 
reasonable po at mabilis. Upang nang sa ganun po yung sinasabi ninyo na pagpapanatili ng kapayapaang pang industriya ay makita po natin at makahikayat po tayo ng mga investors, hindi lamang po local kundi mga foreign investors at doon din po papasok yung aming uh, uh, tungkulin na dapat mag maging gabay sa mga tama pong pamamalakad sa pagtrato ng mga manggagawa. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Before the chair recognizes Senator Marcos, we'd like to acknowledge first uh, Representative uh, Marcoleta. Salamat, Mr. Chair. I'd like to thank the Secretary of uh, Labor, uh, Mr. Chair, for conveying the sentiments that uh, uh, I raised the last time in regard to uh, the uh, workers, uh, employees of ABS-CBN that have already won their cases before the Supreme Court. I received your letter with the attached uh, explanation and report of the uh, NLRC. However, Mr. Chair, I noted that uh, NLRC simply narrated the facts involved in uh, the cases from the filing of the cases until it was finally disposed by the Supreme Court, particularly the eight cases that were consolidated and ultimately won by the workers last September 2020. I saw the uh, list of uh, cases and uh, summary of reports, pero ang nakalagay lamang po ron, isa lamang yata ang uh, naidispose nila by way of computing the awards. Uh, nakalulungkot po ma... Secretary, sapagkat kung titingnan natin, 2020 pa po yung consolidated cases na yan. Hindi man lang nila, they did not even care to explain why did NLRC uh, took or take its sweet time. From 2020 up to this time, there were a series of motions for execution and motion for recomputation. Kung ikukumpara natin doon sa kanilang, sa, lalo na po yung sinasabi ng ABS-CB ng masara yung kanilang network, sinisisi pa nga nila yung representation na ito na nawala ang marami nilang mga manggagawa. Pero sa katunayan, hindi rin nila minama, minamahal ang manggagawa nila sapagkat labing limang taon ang nakararan hanggang makarating sila sa Korte Suprema Nanalo na nga po sila. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin makita. I'd, li I'd like to see, Mr. Chair, Mr. Secretary, a serious attempt on the part of NLRC. Pakita nila na ginagawa nila talaga. Ang sabi pa nga po sa report, eh, because of the several uh, employees involved, talagang marami po eh. They needed time or they needed several, uh, I don't know how long it will take them to recompute. Gano'n po ba ang pag -re recompute talaga sa NLRC? Galing din po yata kayo doon, uh, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Secretary? Mr. Chairman, uh, sa katunayan po, meron po akong uh, dalang updated. Uh, meron na pong mga timeline nito, uh, Mr. Chairman. Kasi hindi ko rin po tinanggap uh, yung, uh, hindi ko po, in close quote na gustuhan na para pong uh, motherhood statement lang yung mga naka, nakasulat dun sa unang pinadala sa akin. Meron po akong iaabot sa inyo uh, na detalye po, may mga specific dates po na kung saan ay magagana po yung binabanggit nyo pagtatapos ng recomputation, pag issue po ng writ. Uh, so yun po yung aking pagkakalaob, Mr. Chairman, kay uh, Congressman Marcoleta, uh, maya maya po. Umanin po na hindi ko kagad na ibigay sa kanila kasi ito po yung aking uh, pinatutukan po kahapon dahil hindi ko nga po medyo hindi po kompleto yung update na aming naipagkalob na una kay Congressman Marcoleta. Maraming salamat po. Magandang balita po yun, uh, Mr. Chair. Salamat po kung meron tayong updated na report, uh, Mr. Secretary, sapagkat iniisip po nga na baka dalhin ko pa doon sa plenary debates ng budget ninyo sa susunod na linggo sapagkat Kung talagang walang gagawin ng NLRC, 
Panalo na po yung mga manggagawa. Eh. Hinihintay na po nila talaga yung award sa, na may pagkalob sa kanila. Matagal na po silang ginipit. Gusto ko pong basahin, uh, Mr. Chair, yung bahagi. Kumukurot sa puso kasi. Tingnan po ninyo yung July 1, 2020 statement ng inyong predecessor noong aming iniimbestigang ABS-CBN. Kasi... Ang palagi nilang sinasabi, nagmamahal sila sa kanilang mga manggagawa. Sabi po, in part of this statement by the Dole, we also take strong exceptions to claims that the department has found ABS-CBN compliant with labor laws and standards or that we have approved of decisional work status for the broadcast firms program employees. The facts bear us out. Our labor inspectors found violations of laws and standards by ABS-CBN. And on account of those findings, the company took steps to correct those infractions. It is therefore patently misleading to attribute to us the claim that ABS-CBN is a compliant company. In fact, there are 67 pending cases against the company in the NLRC and the various courts. Ito po talaga ang uh, record ng ABS-CBN. Kaya para hindi na po tayo mapagsuspetsan na dinidelay nating lahat ito, baka naman hanggang ngayon ang NLRC ay sympathizer pa rin ng ABS-CBN. Kailangang maalis po yun, Mr. Secretary. Hindi lamang sa kailangan, kailangan po ng workers yung award, halos yung iba po ay nagkakasakit na. Salamat po at malugod kong tatanggapin ang updated na report na yan para hindi na po ako makipag-away pa sa plenary na ilalabang ko po talaga yan, Mr. Secretary. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Representative Marcoleta. Uh, Mr. Secretary, please furnish uh, that uh, report to Congressman Marcoleta. Senator Marcos, ma'am, uh, yes. I recognize. Yes, thank you very much. Huling hirit lang po. Thank you very much, and we applaud the quick action of uh, the Secretary of Labor. I understand that right after our meeting on September 16, a Department Order 237 was issued. Um, Ika-clarify ko lang po, merong statement na dapat daw mutually agreed upon arrangements between employers and employees. Paano kung hindi magkasundo? Ibig ba sabihin wala nang telecommunicating or uh, wala nang telecommuting or wala nang work from home? Uh, yun po yung uh, sa ilalim po kasi ng batas, voluntary po yung pagkakaroon ng telecommuting agreement sa both parties dahil po dapat sila ay magkaroon talaga ng kasunduan with respect to terms and conditions. Pero hindi po ibig sabihin na wala ng uh, telecommuting na magaganap. E yung pong amin po ay uh, pag, pa, pagbibigay lamang ng susog doon po sa umiiral na batas sa ngayon na voluntary po ang nature and I understand there are also proposals now to make it mandatory. And by the looks of it po kasi ma'am uh, medyo nakikita po natin na ito na po talaga ang magiging uh, new normal at uh, mahuhuli po tayo. Uh, ito po ay parang in transition upang mabawasan po yung mga hindi pagkakaunawaan ng mga nag engage po sa work from home arrangement. May kinalaman po yan kung sino magbabayad ng ganitong mga equipments and, and, and uh, the other things po yung alternative uh, work uh, place. No? Nililiwanag po namin yon kasi minsan po nakasakay ka sa sasakyan pero nagtatrabaho ka, dapat po i-consider na working time po yon So, yun po yung intention muna nitong IRR na amin po nga pinalabas nang sa ganun po mabawasan yung mga friction points po ng manggagawa at saka ng namumuhunan. Salamat yes. po. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Secretary. Uh, alam po natin na nasa batas na voluntarism at saka mutual consent ang nakatakda. So, balit uh, yun nga, uh, ito na nga ang new normal. Palagay ko, uh, we all understand that this is a work in progress, in fact, and that we are working towards a mandatory uh, regulatory framework. Uh, Nag-anunsyo rin ng civil service nung nakaraang linggo na i-combine na lamang ang four-day week at yung work from home. Pero yung four-day week, kinakailangan daw na 10 hours a day. Anong pakiwari ng dole? Nakonsulta po ba kayo? 
po, um, hindi po kami nagkaroon ng uh, talakayan na malalim ng atin pong civil service uh, commission. Pero uh, doon po sa mga nakarang panahon, meron pong tinatawag na compressed work week. Again po, ang framework po noon, magkaroon po ng arrangement kasi may issue po tungkol sa overtime pay. Eh. Dahil bilang sabi lang po naman na sa atin pong labor code, a normal working uh, hours is 8. No? Pero right. meron pong mga natatrabaho, hindi man ho 8, eh, 6. Kaya depende rin po sa mga kumpanya. Pero ang minimum po, pag lumampas ka ng 8 oras, dapat po ay meron kang overtime pay. Yes. Kaya yun po siguro ang isa sa mga dapat na tinitignan dahil habang nagsasakripisyo mong magagawa, dapat po siguro tinitignan din natin ang kaluwagan ng mga employers na nag-avail po itong uh, compressed work week o pinaiksing mga oras ng, uh, pinahabang oras ng trabaho although binawasan po yung araw na nagre-report po ang manggagawa. Yes, suggestion lang po, ang pinakasimple at ang ginagawa ng ibang bansa, 3 to 4 days work in the office, tapos 1 to 2 days work from home na lamang. Pero lagi lang 8 hours para hindi tayo mapasok sa overtime pay, sa kababaihan, mainit din ang usapin tungkol sa nighttime differential at iba't iba pang problema. So thank you very much and together with Senator Risa, together with uh, Representative Sagarbaria and uh, Representative Marcoleta, I uh, applaud the openness and um, uh, willingness of the Secretary to uh, these new work arrangements. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Are there any more clarifications, inquiries from for our good Secretary? Okay. Uh, Mr. Majority Floor Leader, sir. Mr. Chair, I move to recommend to the plenary for the Commission Confirm the ad interim appointment of Benvenido Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary of Labor and Employment. I so move, Mr. Chair. I second the motion. There's a motion, Julie seconded to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Secretary Laguesma, Secretary of the Department of Labor and uh, Employment. Is there any objection? Hearing none. The motion is here by approved. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, there being no matters to discuss, I move to adjourn the meeting. Okay. The meeting is here by adjourn. Thank you very much and good morning.
session of the Commission on Appointments and the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. Hey, May I call on our dear colleague, Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy Binay, to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you today to ask for your presence and guidance in today's session. Dalangin po namin na inyong patuloy na basbasan at patnubayan ang lahat ng mga confirmed appointees upang magampanan nila ang kanilang mga tungkulin at responsibilidad sa bayan at sa kanilang kapwa. I pray for all leaders of this nation, move us with your presence so that we may be bearers of your grace. Always remind us to work in humility and may we be inspired by your life of selfless service. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the National Anthem. Secretary, please uh, call the roll of members. The Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointments, Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Ferginel G. Biron, Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano, Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Francis Cheese G. Escudero, Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Albert S. Garcia, Greg G. Gasataya, Christopher Bongo, Ramon N. Guico Jr., Risa Ontiveros, Lauren Legarda, Oscar Oka G. Malapitan, Rodante D. Marcoleta, Amy R. Marcos, Lani Mercado Revilla, Jose Gay G. Padiernos, Johnny T. Pimentel, Grace Po, Judin Jesus M. Romualdo, Manuel T. Sagarbaria, Francis Tol N. Tolentino, Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villaferte Jr., Cynthia A. Villar. The chair is present. With 21 persons present in the gallery today in the uh, Senate session hall or the CA session hall, we declare the presence of a quorum, the joint leader. With you, Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on September 14, 2022, and consider the, the same as approved. Is there any objection there being none? The motion is approved. Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Labor, Employment, Social Welfare, and Migrant Workers on the ad interim appointment of Mr. Bienvenido Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary, Department of Labor and Employment. I so move, Mr. Chair. There is no objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader. The motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that the Chairperson of the Committee on Labor, Employment, Social Welfare, and Migrant Workers, Representative Greg Gasataya, be recognized. Our distinguished colleague from the city of Bacolod, my Casimanua, uh, Congressman Greg Gasataya, is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Distinguished uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is this representation's pleasure to endorse to this honorable body the confirmation of Attorney Bienvenido Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. We are joined here today by his loving wife, Tess, and her two beloved children, Anna Belinda 
and Bernard Allen. Mr. Chairperson, coming from modest means, Attorney Laguesma is raised by his Bicolano father, a plumber by trade, and his Ilocano mother, a homemaker, in a brood of three boys and two girls, all of whom have successfully earned degrees in various fields, Mr. Chairperson. Not known to many, Attorney Laguesma sold comics and newspapers in his younger years while attending his primary schooling in San Francisco del Monte, Quezon City. While attending high school in Novaliches, Attorney Laguesma spent weekends helping his father taking on jobs up until he was pursuing his bachelor's degree in political science at Lyceum of the Philippines University. Thereafter, Mr. Chairperson, he pursued his passion and understanding of the law and earned his Bachelor of Laws from the Ateneo de Manila University Law School in Padre Faura, Faura in 1975, while working as a researcher to the then Constitutional Convention Delegate, Sister Sonia Aldiguer. In 1985, Attorney Laguesma pursued further as a scholar at the Royal Institute of Public Administration in London, concentrating in public sector administration. Known as Benny to his family, friends, and colleagues, he started his career in the labor sector in 1976, juggling his study of the law and his position as contractual mediator arbiter in the then Ministry of Labor, labor serving under the late President Ferdinand E. Marcos Sr. He practiced labor law in the bureaucracy, rising through the ranks as Undersecretary of Labor until his optional retirement at the age of 45 in March of 1996, Mr. Chairperson. This seasoned labor practitioner, through his expertise in various capacities in the public and the private sector, was later on appointed Secretary of Labor by the former President Joseph Ejercito Estrada from June of 1998 to 2001. For more than 20 years, he built and expanded his legal practice and established his own law firm. He attended numerous international labor organization conventions and conferences in furtherance of his grasp and knowledge in the ever-evolving labor practices around the world. He also expanded his professional reach by becoming a member of several corporate boards. Through his in involvement in various social, civic, and volunteer activities, benefiting the underprivileged, his, he embodies the core Rotarian values of service, integrity, goodwill, and peace in all levels of society. This nominee, Mr. Chairperson, your honors, has served under five presidents, sharpening his knowledge in the pursuit of social justice through the promotion and protection of the labor sector. Once started his industrious career in the government service under former President Ferdinand Marcos Sr., now stands before us today, again, as Secretary of Labor under our current president, his Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Mr. Chairperson, a working student who managed to graduate as class valedictorian in high school and attained multiple academic degrees, Attorney Laguespa knows by heart the rigors of the daily arduous lives of the labor sector. As he opened up opportunities for himself, this representation is confident that Attorney Laguespa will also provide opportunities to similarly situated Filipinos here and abroad. Educated in political science and the law with impressive credentials in public administration and a reputable member of the integrated bar of the Philippines, <laughs> Attorney Laguesma, through his knowledge, experience, and accomplishments, has become an integral part in the progressive development and regulation of labor. Mr. Chairperson, I firmly believe that Attorney Laguesma, beyond his merit and fitness, has the heart and character to promote and protect labor, 
local and overseas, organized and unorganized, in Ferdinand's of full employment opportunities for all. Recognizing the issues in the labor sector through first-hand experience, he dedicated his entire life in the service of our country. Today, we call Attorney Legues Mabak to public service with trust and confidence in him and his stellar public service record and proven integrity. Mr. Chairperson, honorable colleagues, with this, I am honored and privileged to recommend the confirmation of Attorney Bienvenido Benny Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary of Labor and Employment. I so move, Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Chair, may we recognize uh, Senator G.V. Ercito for his seconding speech and manifestation. The distinguished gentleman from San Juan, Senator J.V. Hercito is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the Commission of Appointments. Good afternoon. It is an honor to stand today and manifest my support to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Attorney Benvenido Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. Secretary Benny is an institution in the, in the Department of Labor and Employment. He served the department for 22 years rising from the ranks within the organization until his optional retirement in 1996. He started his career in the department as mediator arbiter in 1976 during the presidency of the late President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. From there, he occupied various significant positions in the department from being a labor arbiter to being its undersecretary. He was called again to serve by former President Joseph Estrada in 1998, this time as the Labor, Secretary, the labor Department Secretary. He answered to this call in a heartbeat, completing President Arab's top-notch cabinet officials. Secretary, Secretary Benny's contribution to the labor sector transcends administrations. His vow to make the labor department more responsible and responsive institution that reaches out to, to need of workers, especially those in rural and far-flung urban areas. A vow that time and again he fulfills in every function, big or small. He's known by his colleagues as highly competent, accomplished, and approachable individual. His unblemished service record precedes him. Despite a lucrative law practice, he continued to live modestly and within his means. To me, he's a man of honor and integrity, values that are most needed by the Department of Labor Employment in order to implement the most needed reforms within the organization. With the country's current employment rate at 94.8% in July 2022, I trust that Secretary Laguesma endeavors to further improve this number so that no Filipino will be left behind in life. Under his watch, I truly believe that our country's workforce will genuinely ba build back and recover from the damaging effects brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. As a labor law practitioner, he also knows the plight of workers who are sometimes left with no choice but to settle with a hostile work environment and working conditions. We look forward to see the work of Secretary Benny in the department as he champions crucial reforms to protect our workers. In a country like ours where opportunities are limited, Filipinos need in the government who will look after their interests and promote their welfare. I'm so glad that the president has picked Secretary Benny to primarily do this job for he has vision for the people and commitment to public service. With this, Mr. Chairman, I would like to reiterate my full support to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Benny Leguesma to the Department of Labor and Employment. Marami sila ka Thank you very much, Senator Hersto, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Representative Ramon Gico. The Vice Chairman of the Commission on Appointments, our distinguished gentleman from Pangasinan, Vice Chairman Ramon Gico, is recognized. Mr. Chair, for the last time today, I rise before this August chamber to support the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Attorney Bienvenido Estudillo Laguisma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. During the public hearing conducted by the Committee on Labor and Employment and Migrant Workers this morning, chaired by our distinguished colleague, Representative Greg Gasataya, our appointment, our appointee has proven and shown himself worthy to be at the helm of the Department of Labor and Employment, an agency which he once headed as 
and dedicated his life of service for more than two decades. Our appointee's career achievements who started as a mediator arbiter in the 70s, as a regional director in the 80s, and capping his career as the secretary of the Dole in the late 90s to early 2000 is an inspiring feat. Today, as we confirm his praise mandate as the head of the Department of Labor and Employment, in the words of former Secretary Billio, signifies the continuity of the noble initiatives that we have undertaken for the Filipino workers and people. With Secretary Bini at the helm, we can be assured that the aspirations of our labor workforce can be achieved and their concerns, even the minorities, can be addressed. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, it is my honor to second the motion for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Attorney Benvenido Estudillo Laguisma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, I, uh, I will now recognize Representative Johnny Pimentel. Our distinguished colleague from the province of Surigao del Sur, Congressman Johnny Pimentel, is recognized. Mr. Chair, no less than the Constitution provides that the state affords full protection to labor, local and overseas, organized and unorganized, and promote and promote rather full employment and equality of employment opportunities for all. It is also the same fundamental law which affirms labor as a primary social economic force protecting the rights of workers and promoting their welfare. The Department of Labor and Employment is the agency mandated to formulate policies, implement programs and services, and serves as the policy coordinating arm of the executive branch in the field of labor and employment. It is DOLE that is tasked with the enforcement of the provisions of the Labor Code as amended. At the helm of the department should be a public servant whose heart beats with the workers' cardinal rights, assuring and guaranteeing that the rights to self-organization, collective bargaining and negotiations, peaceful concerned activities, security of tenure, humane working conditions, living wages, participation in policy and decision-making on the rights and benefits should be protected. That is, every heartbeat ensures that once there is doubt in the interest between management and labor, balance is to be tilted in favor of the latter. Secretary Benny Laguesma has served this nation in the labor sector both as a seasoned lawyer and a champion of labor rights. He was once on this very chamber of the Commission on Appointments when he was confirmed as Secretary of Labor and Employment during his stint from 1998 to 2001, a post he competently and diligently served. Moreover, as early as 1976 to 1979, he served as a mediator, arbiter of the department, which he now serves as secretary. In the subsequent year, he served as labor arbiter of the National Labor Relations Commission, later as assistant regional director in 1981 to 1982 in Dole Regional Office 3, and later as regional director in 1982 to 1986 in the same Dole Regional Office. In 1990 to 1996, he was under secretary of the Labor Department. Secretary Benny Logesma is also a career executive service officer holding the CESO level of CESO 1. It is said that Secretary Benny was hesitant when he was offered to lead the DOLE, considering his age as a reason. However, when the present government laid out its vision 
in improving the lives of the Filipino workers, it came upon Secretary Benny Laguesma to answer the clarion call that the lofty duty is priority above all as one service to its nation and the labor sector. Therefore, Mr. Chair, I have the honor and privilege to second the motion for the confirmation of Secretary Benito Leguesma as Secretary of Department of Labor and Employment, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. Chair, may we not recognize Senator Jingo Estrada. A distinguished colleague from the city of San Juan, Senator Jingo Estrada is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, to convey my full support to the confirmation of that interim appointment of Attorney Bienvenido Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. As Chairman of the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment and Human Resources Development, we will be working closely and frequently with the good Secretary in advancing labor le legislation. It is therefore a relief that we are dealing with a veteran and a true professional is always ready to, to accommodate our committee's requests for information and guidance. Our distinguished appointee is returning to this commission for yet another confirmation for the same position. Secretary Benny was appointed as, Dole, as, as uh, Dole Secretary by my father, former President Joseph Estrada in 1998. And, and I can say he's one of the best cabinet members under the Estrada administration. And it is safe to say that Secretary Benny is our go-to guy for labor concerns. This time, he will be confronted with a new labor landscape, landscape one where telecommute, telecommuting and work from home arrangements are considered the norm, where our manpower development suffered serious setbacks due to the restrictions posed by the pandemic and where another government agency is created to fully take to fully take care of our migrant workers. Fortunately, Secretary Leguesma brings his wealth of 22 years of experience in the department, and a total of 28 years in government service, as he vows Dole to be a more responsible and responsive institution that reaches out to needy workers, especially those in rural and far urban areas, and more conscientious and committed to delivering services, especially to those with limited knowledge and access to Dole. I am certain that he will serve the best interests of our labor sector. Mr. Chairman, this, represent this representation is of the firm belief that with his competence, patriotism, and, un and unblemished record, Attorney Benny Laguesma is a welcome addition to the cabinet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Representative Ferge Biron? Our distinguished colleague from the province of Iluilu, Congressman Ferge Biron is recognized. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, in our indispensable duty of confirming the appointment of the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment, I believe it is only proper to reopen the pages of the supreme law of the land. No less than the Philippine Constitution, embodies the commitment of the state to afford full protection to labor, local and overseas, organized and unorganized, and promote full employment and equality of employment opportunities for all. This commitment is a major facet of social justice in the Philippines. The state needs a strong leader to be a vanguard of social justice in the field of labor and employment. It is therefore crucial that we confirm only those who are determined to be qualified and worthy. And I have confidence that Attorney Bienvenido Estudillo Laguesma is that man. His two decades of service in the Department of Labor and Employment, occupying various positions from mediator arbiter to OIC of the Provincial Labor Office to labor arbiter to assistant director, to regional director, first administrator of the National Conciliation and Mediation Board, and to undersecretary until his retirement, had fully clothed him with the thick armor of much experience. His years of exposure in labor relations, coursing through the changing dynamics and dimensions of economy, technology, gender, and environment, 
reinforces his adaptability to employment trends and practices which would be favorable to the welfare of our workers. At a young age, he was exposed to work as he himself sold comics and newspapers to help his father while he was studying in primary school. Now in his advanced age, he is still willing to work in service to government and the people, bringing on the table all his competencies and values north worthy of a secretary. He had been secretary of the Department of Labor in 1998, and I trust that his past experiences have given him the wisdom to better fulfill the duties of the secretary the second time around. In line with the state's aspirations for social justice and in line with my own, it is my sincerest honor and privilege to second the motion to confirm the ad interim appointment of Attorney Bienvenido Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, may we not recognize Senator Bongo? Mr. Chair, esteemed colleagues, a pleasant day to all. I take the floor to second the motion to confirm the ad interim appointment of Secretary Bienvenido Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. The, the good secretary is no stranger to government service. He has spent 22 years in the same department, patiently and vigorously working his way up the ranks. Having previously held this post, there is no doubt that Secretary Laguesma will fulfill his mandate with utmost diligence and faithfulness. Mr. Secretary, I am hopeful that you will build on the successes of the previous administration to ng Tupad program and continue to make the lives of our countrymen more comfortable, ensuring that no one will be left behind in the road towards recovery. Sana sa pamumuno ninyo, may pagpatuloy ninyo, at lalo pang dumami ang matulungan ng gobyerno. Ang pinaka-importante ay walang uh, magutom, sikapin na bigyan ng kabuhayan ang mga mahirap, at ang pinaka-nangangailangan nito. Unahin natin sila dahil tayo sa si gobyerno ang inaasahan nila. Again, you have my heartfelt support and gratitude for your service to the Filipino people. Muli, congratulations at uh, mabuhay po kayo. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Senator Francis Tol Tolentino. A distinguished gentleman from the great province of Cavite, Senator Francis Tol Tolentino is recognized. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, I fully support the confirmation of Secretary Benny Laguesma. The longest provision in our Constitution comes from Article 13, Section 3. It is more than 165 words, more or less, Mr. President. And fittingly, Mr. President, the sixth letter of the last name of our nominee starts with an S. Laguesma, Mr. President. The Constitution, constitutional provision that I mentioned is full of letter S. It shall accord, it shall promote, it shall regulate. It has something to do with the rights of labor and management. And again, fittingly, Mr. President, post-COVID, our attention should be devoted to the economy. And Mr. President, the last two words of the said constitutional provision, Article 13, Section 13, Article 13, Section 3, speaks of expansion and growth. Mr. President, I am very sure that with the background and experience of Secretary Laguesma, he will be able to contribute to the expansion and growth of the Philippine economy post-COVID. On a personal note, Mr. President, the nominee belongs to the same law school fraternity as this representation was also a member, is also a member of that law school fraternity. We came from the same law school, Mr. President. We came from the same London experience, Mr. President, not to visit the Queen, but to study. We both have Bicolana mothers, Mr. President, hardworking Bicolana mothers. I associate myself with, our, with the speeches of our colleagues in supporting the nomination of Secretary 
Penny Laguesman. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Representative Manuel Chiquiting Sagarbaria. This distinguished gentleman from the city of Dumaguete is recognized, Congressman Sagarbaria. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chair. Mr. President, Mr. Chair, my dear colleagues, good afternoon. I stand before this August body to express my full support on the confirmation of Attorney Bienvenido Laguesma as Secretary of DOLE, Department of Labor and Employment. Much has been said about him. With his esteemed background and dedication to public service, he is indeed competent and qualified for the post. It is my honor and privilege to second the motion for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Attorney Bienvenido Laguesma as Secretary of DOLE, Department of Labor, Labor and Employment. So move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, on the part of the majority, we, we support the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Mr. Bienvenido Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary, Department of Labor and Employment. Mr. Chair, on the part of the minority, we support the confirmation of Secretary Bienvenido Laguesma as Secretary of Department of Labor and Employment. Thank you. And if I may just also say a few words, uh, this gentleman is not just qualified. He's very qualified for the post. And I would like to say that in my opinion, I believe we are very lucky to have him come out of retirement to serve once again the Filipino people as capacity as to being the secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. In this time of the post-pandemic era, he's the same person that we need who can help heal the labor, sec labor sector, as well as uh, be the shot in the arm that our country needs for more labor and employment to be infused back into our economy, into our country. So uh, once again, congratulations, sir. And I'm proud to consider you also as my friend. So with that, there being no objections. The ad interim appointment of Secretary Benevido Lagu Estudillo Laguesma as Secretary of the Department of Labor is hereby confirmed. Congratulations, sir. Mr. Chair, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. There being no objections, the motion is approved. Thank you very much, everyone. May we request Secretary Laguesma for a photo op? Yes.